Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Today, we're going to talk about keto. But before we get started, let me go ahead with the uh, disclaimer. This video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. We're going to be talking about uh, the effects of keto. Now, <clears throat> The keto diet uh, can be is basically a l very low carb diet, high in fats and high in protein. Um, one of the things that I want to distinguish right off the get go is that there's many ways to uh, include different foods in the keto diet. So let's make the distinguishment uh, clear right from the beginning. Uh, most of the research studies that are done, if, if not near all of them, are done on those doing a standard American style of keto diet, which is animal-based. That means high animal protein and high animal fat. There is an approach of keto diet which incorporates uh, low carbohydrates, but high plant protein and high plant fat. Uh, now, obviously, there are differences in the types of fats that are used uh, in plants and in animals where predominantly the animal fats are saturated fats, and even the saturated fats are different in their chemi uh, chemical makeup as well as their impact on the body. So very different between a vegan or uh, plant-exclusive style of keto diet and a animal-based keto diet. Uh, now, one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of keto, uh, especially long-term, is because the very well-established detrimental effects of both high-protein diets and high-fat diets, both of which studied independently have shown lots and lots of negative effects. Um, so when you combine those two, um, you're having generally a negative impact on overall health. Now, let's talk quickly, shortly about the positive impacts of a keto diet. So when you are looking at people who are clinically obese or, or have advanced type 2 diabetes, um, you could see temporary short-term benefits by getting them to drop the weight because the body fat itself puts people at a much higher risk rate um, uh, based on all the most of the research out there. So getting that body weight within manageable uh, realms and manageable parameters could be beneficial, but short-term. So, uh, but my take on that is, well, yes, that's true, but there's lots of different ways that don't require a high fat, high protein diet to drop body weight. And they've shown that a low fat plant-based diet, whole food plant-based diet is just as successful over time at reducing body fat. So I don't think the advantage is there of saying, well, it helps get the weight down and that's important because it can improve people's health and reduce their risk from um, all cause mortality, whether it be risk of cancer, or risk of diabetes, uh, dying of diabetes or risk of dying of cardiovascular disease. Yes, that's true, but there's other ways to accomplish that goal without putting yourself at health risks by increasing the amount of protein and the amount of uh, especially saturated animal fat that you're consuming. So I think these are achievable without the keto diet. That's why I just don't see much of an advantage. But recent studies have shown uh, something looking at a little bit more long-term effects of a ketogenic diet on the body. Now, let's, let's talk about why the body goes into ketosis uh, to begin with. Okay, so when you have sources of energy, the body can break down. The very first source of energy that the body goes to is carbohydrates and uh, simple carbohydrates even easier. So that's the first place where the body goes to make uh, energy, energy for ATP, which runs every single cell function in the human body, including the brain. The brain almost exclusively feeds on glucose unless there's no glucose present. So uh, glucose or carbohydrates converted into glucose, simple sugars, 
is exactly what the brain feeds on. And many people going on a ketogenic diet will experience brain fog and um, even headaches and, and uh, brain issues because of that, because the body is switching over to using ketones as the source of fuel or energy for the brain um, or even pyroglycotemic acid, breaking it down from protein. So what, what this does is forces the body into a secondary or backup approach that the body uses. Now, why does the body have that? Well, food scarcity for one. So when we consume carbohydrates, which our normal diet would be rich in carbohydrates if we're consuming plant foods as well as animal foods, even in the wild, say our ancient ancestors, which consumed a whole lot of plants, uh, judging by the uh, fossilized human poop from our ancestors, they were consuming uh, 100 to over 200 grams of protein a day, whereas the average American consumes about 15 grams of, uh, of fiber, excuse me, a day. And, and they were consuming over 200 grams of fiber a day. So they were eating a, a whole lot more plants than modern humans are consuming today. So understanding that that's where we came from, why did we have this backup system? Very important reason, and that's for survival. So when we consume carbohydrates, we can store them as fat. And that's a good thing. That helps us survive so that when there's no food available, we have a backup resource for energy in that body fat. Um, now, obviously, if you overconsume carbo carbohydrates and you are not utilizing them through exercise or movement, or brain function or just normal functions, then your body is gonna store excess amounts of fat and that's not a good thing. And that can lead to type two diabetes, cardiovascular, high blood pressure, all the hosts of the negative disease states that we've seen. So what happens when we remove carbohydrates? Well, the body then says, okay, well, if there's no carbohydrates presence, we must uh, use these ketones to start breaking down fat at a much faster level than we normally do. This accelerates the process. So when do we see ketosis in human beings? Well, number one is when we're starving <laughs> and that uh, ketones are in, in when you see a starving population or when there are insufficient calories available for the human being, they will produce ketones. Now we see this naturally in fasting states. So when you do fasting and even intermittent fasting, a body will increase ketones to help mobilize and utilize fat for energy. Now, that is a temporary short-term fix until we get our food supply back. So that's the backup system that our body has to utilize uh, stored fat or fat uh, uh, from food that we're consuming or even the proteins we're consuming to convert them more uh, through beta oxidation into uh, usable calories. So this is a backup system. So we see it when we're starving. We see it when we're poisoned. So if you were to accidentally eat a mushroom that was no bueno, that poison would mean your body has to work overdrive to try to get that poison out of the system. So it has to mobilize a lot of energy. Carbohydrates get used up very quickly and efficiently because we are carb burning machines. So it's a lot longer process for the body to convert um, energy from fat and it's much slower process but the body can produce ketones to accelerate that fat burning process to mobilize energy and that's what we see when somebody is majorly injured like burns over you know third degree burns over two-thirds of your body your body needs a lot of energy very quickly to try to mobilize that energy to use for the healing and repairing process um, and immunological or in the case of poisoning detoxification your body has to use a lot of a lot of high activity to quickly try to get that toxin out of the body as quick as possible so it's using up a lot of energy and that's when it'll activate ketones so when you're starving when you're poisoned or if you're diabetic now why do we see high ketone levels in diabetic patients so this is interesting because 
once you feed the body, and this is the human cell, once uh, you feed the body a high a fat diet, that fat starts to accumulate in the muscle cells. Well, when there's so much fat in the muscle cells that the body can't use that energy quickly enough, the body actually shuts down the receptor sites on the outside of the cell, meaning that insulin can't dock and, and force uh, carbohydrates or other sources of energy into the cell. That's called insulin resistance. It says, nope, I can't take insulin because I can't let any more energy because this cell is full of fat inside. It's full of too much energy. So it shuts down and says, nope, no more energy coming in, please. Now that's a natural process to help our body use up that fat first and then move forward. And that would be a natural appropriate uh, result. But in type two, where you keep throwing that fat, keep throwing that fat into the body, the body becomes type two diabetes or insulin resistant. You know, it's because it says no more energy. I can't process any, any more of that energy. Ends up storing it as fat, which right? type two diabetics tend to be uh, heavy in, in body fat. Um, but in type two diabetes, because they can't process any of that sugar, the body is forced to start burning fat. So you see very high ketone uh, body concentrations in those with, they even call it diabetic ketoacidosis. So this is when the body is just getting flooded with ketones, trying to remove that fat from the system by uh, beta oxidation, either burning it um, in or just burning it off for heat or actually uh, utilizing it if the body doesn't have enough demand. This is why exercise is really important because exercise creates a demand for that energy and can reduce that body fat and then reduce the body down into levels where it no longer needs to produce ketones and it can start functioning normally. This is getting people out of a type two diabetes situation. Check out my videos on type two diabetes recently, which showed that using just twice as much exercise on the American Diabetic Association diet actually pulled up to 60% more people out of diabetes than just diet alone. So diet is probably the most important, but when you add um, uh, exercise to that, especially intense regular exercise, you can quickly remove people, pull people out of the diabetic uh, type 2 diabetes situation just through diet and a whole food plant-based uh, diet and exercise combined, even better with exercise. Okay, so why not a high fat diet? Why is this high fat diet not good? Well, there's a whole host of reasons. I'm not going to go into all of them, but a high fat diet uh, disrupts our microbiome. Uh, fat digestion requires bile. Bile creates an environment for negative bacteria. So the more high fats you consume, the more you are increasing. So you have 100% of your microbiome and 40% of them are pathogenic bacteria, bad guys, and then 60% are good. When you put saturated animal fat in there, it increases and multiplies the bad bacteria. And then it squeezes down the food supply for the good bacteria, those that feed on fiber, which is only found in plants. They feed on uh, polyphenols, only found in plants. They feed on uh, lots of other different uh, uh, chemical phytonutrients. We're now discovering they feed on them and create wonderful metabolites for our body. You're squeezing that down every time you consume a high fat diet, especially in the case of keto, where you're actually removing the good guy's food source, which is fiber and plants. Now, you can do a vegan keto diet, which is much higher in fiber, much higher in the polyphenols, and not have as much as that microbiome disruption, but you're still putting that fat into the gut, causing a higher level of gram negative or the bad guy bacteria because they live in bile environments whereas the good bacteria do not and cannot survive in bile bacteria and bile environments in the gut so you're shifting the microbiome to gut di dysbiosis this can result in all kinds of problems for the gut leaky gut 
uh, the damage of the saturated fats and turning into LPS. I won't go into that too much because I want to stay focused on this, but that's another nasty chemical created by the digestion of animal fats and animal proteins. Um, so just a whole host from Alzheimer's links now being it. These uh, proteins, these bacteria actually consume or chew up the proteins and cause them to be denatured or disformed or disfigured into tangled knots of protein. And these knots of proteins can form amyloid and tau plaques in the brain, which is Alzheimer's disease, also causing senile dementia and cognitive decline. None of those things are a good thing. So doing a high fat uh, diet for any reason is not a good time, uh, not a good uh, approach for a whole host of negative effects on the human body. Short term, not a problem. The body can handle it and will will move back and forth, make some microbiome changes and then change back once you're putting in the appropriate diet. So short term, not so much of an issue, but let's look at this first study. This first study is, I'll go ahead and put it up in the comments section. This first study uh, says that, hey, wait a minute, the amount of ketones may be, a, may be an issue. So let's put this up on the screen and I'll read it out to you. So this, this study was done in, in 2020, the effects of ketogenic diet and keto bodies, ketone bodies on the cardiovascular system. Concentration matters. When diabetic keto, ketoacidosis, high ketone antibodies concentrations are detrimental to vasculature. They are wreaking havoc on the vascular system. That is the blood vessels leading to and from the heart and the brain. When you cause damage to that, you can cause scarification or fibrosis or tissue, scar tissue damage. And when you do that, it hardens the vascular system so it can't expand and collapse as your blood pressure goes up or down. You exercise, your body expands the blood vessels to get more oxygen and blood to tissues. When you are stressed, you constrict it so that get, the body gets blood to the tissues faster because you need to think fast because you're stressed. That's what your body thinks anyway. Now we have different stressors and stuff that cause that. But when you want good elasticity to these um, to the vascular system, and when you scar up or damage the vascular system, they become rigid and stiff. And this is what we know now as hypertension or high blood pressure. Uh, also can lead to a host of other issues, including further placking down the road. So not a good thing, heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease, all of these issues, hypertension, hyper, uh, high blood pressure can arise from this uh, high ketone attack on the vascular system. But this next study is gonna probably be even more frightening to you. And I'm gonna put it up here because this one was just came out in February of 2021. Um, just last year. I'll put this up on the screen. This is where it gets a little study, uh, scary. And um, this study, February 2021, ketogenic diets inhibit mitochondrial biogenesis and induced cardiac fibrosis. Okay, so what does that mean? Let me go ahead and read the the, the lead uh, uh, comment from the researchers, notably increased BOHB, that's uh, ketones, increased ketone levels, and SIRT7, that's a, a gene on, on our human genome expression, decreased mitochondrial biogenesis. And this is really important, but let me finish the sentence. And increased cardiac fibrosis, this is scar tissue in the hearts. And they were detected in human atrial fibrillation heart tissues. Now, this is pretty frightening. It, this is a look at long-term um, uh, people on long-term high-protein, high-fat, low-carbohydrates, low-carbohydrates, slow down, Jeff, low-carbohydrate diets. And what's happening here? So let's tackle that first thing, decreased mitochondrial biogenesis. Okay, so the mitochondria are the powerhouses uh, in our cells. Mitochondria exist in all cells. 
they supply, they manufacture the ATP, the energy resource that runs all of our cells. Now, the highest amount of, uh, of uh, mitochondria are in the heart because the heart's running all the time, <laughs> right? So it makes sense. It is the muscle that we are using 24 seven. If we stop using it, we're dead. So we're not using it anymore. So it requires the most amount of mitochondria. And the keto diet is actually stopping or inhibiting the biogenesis, which is the creation of these mitochondria. Reducing these actually caused what they call apoptosis or cell death of mitochondria. This is horrible. This is exactly what you don't want for heart health. Um, this is this is really frightening. And, and I, I, I don't know how to express the importance of this because one, you're talking about the heart not getting enough energy to supply itself, which then causes some of the cells to say, hey, wait a minute, we're not getting enough energy. We're going to shut down or apoptize, explode, right? We're going to just self self annihilate, self destruct mechanism. That's what apoptosis is. It's the the body saying that cell's not going to survive. We're not creating enough energy. Go ahead and you know release the enzymes to just break down the cell and trash it. So you're actually killing heart cells because you're not producing enough energy for it to do now. What increases biogenesis? Carbohydrates, simple sugars. <laughs> this, this increases biogenesis. Now, not processed sugars, but simple sugars that the body makes from complex carbohydrates. So this is really important. Carbohydrates boost up biogenesis, producing more energy for the heart and strengthening the heart. And ketones actually reduce biogenesis of mitochondria, reducing the level of energy available to the heart, and then causing apoptosis or cell death of hearts, causing fibrotic tissue. Fibrosis are fibers, basically. Fiber tissues replacing damaged cells to structurally hold them in place. That's what scar tissue basically is, is fibrotic tissue. It's fibrosis. So you're talking about scarification of the heart, a heart that needs to be flexible. The more it's scarified, the more hard it is and less flexible it is. And that sets you up for some very dangerous, dangerous situations to come. So let's dive into this uh, study a little bit more because it goes on <laughs> pretty, pretty clearly. And I'm going to quote directly from this so you can see I'm not ad-libbing, but it says, moreover, in, in one of the few long-term studies that they looked at at long-term, they found a 25-year follow-up study of a large cohort found that a low-carbohydrate diet was associated with increased mortality. Well, duh. If it's clear that these mechanisms of action, which is reduced biogenesis, all right, let me let me talk. Uh, let me stress a little bit the importance of uh, mitochondrial biogenesis. Let's see if I got this uh, study here. Okay, I'm a. Little... All right, I don't have the study at hand, but all right, so. When you look at studies, you can just type this in, just Google or Google Scholar. You can type this in and look up uh, mitochondrial biogenesis. Mitochondrial biogenesis, the more you basically mitochondria you have in the cell, basically the healthier that cell is. And generally, the longer life that cell has, because it has more access to usable real ATP energy. So this is this is what you're doing when you're going on a keto diet. Yes, you will drop body fat, but there are other ways to drop body fat that don't damage the heart, don't reduce your ability to uh, live a healthy and, and long life. Um, 
yes, it does work. Ketogenic diets do work at reducing body fat. I'll also note that uh, they do work and seem to work and multiple studies have borne this out for epilepsy. So if you have epilepsy, there may be a place for that, but I would encourage you to take a look at a, a, a completely plant-based approach to uh, ketogenic diets if that's what you're using it for. For, for if you're raising just a little bit of ketones, this is not a problem because the body has a way of normally and naturally dealing with this. And this would be a normal function when we have food scarcity. We're out foraging for food. We find some food. We get a lot of food. We store some fat. Great. Then we come to a place where we don't find food. We need to burn some of that fat. Our body will produce ketones. Great does a little bit of it until we can find more food. We get more food, more carbohydrates in our body. Our body switches back over to its normal healthy function of burning carbohydrates for energy. This We are carbohydrate burning machines. We are forcing the body to go into its secondary or backup or emergency resource of that by going into a prolonged fasted state basically is what it is. It's forcing the body to go into fat burning state this is not a healthy approach. Now, um, so I talked about the, the dangers of it, but let's actually talk about some of the effects of that on, on people. Um, let's uh, put up this study, this first study. Okay. Let me just put up the study at least, and then I'll just read the um, text to you because that's a little bit too much text. Okay, so this study is uh, effects of combining a ketogenic diet with resistance training on body composition, strength, and mechanical power. And this is what, what that study found. And looking at multiple studies. So this is what they found. Conversely, ketogenic diets might impair resistance training induced gains, that's muscle acquisition, on muscle mass and performance, particularly when expressed in absolute values. So when they're looking at absolute values, how did it absolutely change um, the body's performance? Let's take a look at this next study. So this next study is efficacy of a ketogenic diet on body composition, resistance training in trained men. So this one's looking at trained men and seeing what the source is. Conclusion, our results suggest that keto diet might be an alternative dietary approach to decrease fat and visceral adipose tissue, that is the uh, body fat on the outside of the body, without decreasing lean body mass. Now, what is that saying? <laughs> without decreasing. Well, it means you don't get any gains. So these men are working out and getting zero muscle gains. And the sentence finishes by, however, it might not be useful to increase muscle mass during positive energy balance in men undergoing resistant training for eight weeks. Now, some people might say, all right, well, that's only eight weeks study. So, so let's look at a little bit longer study. And this is three months on a keto diet. Let's get this off here so I can remember. Okay, let me put this one up here. So this one is actually three months. Okay, so much longer. The three month effects of ketogenic diets on body composition, blood parameters, and um, performance metrics and CrossFit training. So these are looking at CrossFitters, which tend to be really interested in the ketogenic diet. It's, it's very popular amongst uh, CrossFitters. So the DEXA scans, this is considered one of the best scans to measure uh, lean body mass. Lean body mass changes were not different in all the groups. That means a keto diet didn't get any more gains than, than anybody else uh, eating a normal standard diet. Although DEXA dual leg lean mass decreased in the keto diet group by 1.4%. And the vastus lateris thickness, these are the leg uh, muscle groups, decreased by 8%. So they're losing muscle here. 
So this is not a great diet if you're looking to gain muscle. So, you know, a lot of uh, bodybuilders uh, tend to use a low carbohydrate diet in order to quickly get body fat down. But in so, they generally tend to lose muscle in the process. Get leaner, get smaller. <laughs> That's the bummer effect of it. Now, I personally am using a, an entirely different approach. I'm using about uh, 50 to 55% carbohydrates in my diet. And I am down to around 11% body fat from 14 to 16% body fat, which I usually am at uh, during off season. And I'm doing this without any cardio at all, just by training very intensely. So this can be done. I can get into very low body fat I can get below 10% body fat without changing that amount of carbohydrates and, and without adding any cardio. I'm doing a zero cardio right now. And all right, I'll just go ahead and show a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's my 60 year old tummy <laughs> at, uh, at, uh, 55% of my diet being carbohydrates. Um, it's not necessary to cut the carbs in order to get lean. It's just not. And you're putting yourself at risk for doing so. Um, uh, you don't have to end up losing. I'm actually gaining muscle. I'm at uh, 185 at, at just under 10% body fat uh, more recently. And this is incredible. This is better than I've accomplished in uh, my early years, even as low as my 30s, I didn't keep this low of body fat with this amount of muscle. Um, it's just amazing. Um, now, that study that I just showed up did uh, conclude one other thing. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the screen because this is also what makes um, part of this a little bit frightening. Changes in fasting glucose and cholesterol and triglycerides were the same, those doing a keto diet versus non-keto diet, although LDL cholesterol increased 35% in just three months. That's frightening. That's definitely something you don't want and uh, for, for multiple health reasons. Um, we also see that um, the Keto diet, a high fat, high protein diet can reduce testosterone by up to 37%. I think I have that study here. I don't have it in front of me. Okay. Um, but and check out my previous study on keto uh, diets and showed it reduced men's testosterone 37%. Um, so that is pretty, uh, <laughs> it may be part of the reason why they're actually losing muscle too as a contributing factor as well. You've got colorectal issues, microbiome issues, hormone issues. You've got fat uh, potential to cause leaky gut, to cause Alzheimer's, to cause uh, endothelial damage, just a whole host of nasties. And you don't need to do this. Remember, um, Let's go over some alternatives. One, fasting is a great way to short-term increase um, fat mobilization, but do it in a way where your body is not burdened by uh, taxation of heavy amounts of protein, heavy amounts of fats, and heavy amounts of waste products and ketones that could be damaging. The body is then just using the ketones appropriately without creating all that work for healing and repairing, for balancing the body, for bringing the body back into homeostasis as far as fat levels are concerned. That's a great way to approach it. Now, do supervise fasting. If you're going to do fasting with a doctor like uh, Dr. Frank Sabatino, reach out to him. He is great. He does fasting retreats uh, all throughout the year. Contact him if you're interested in doing a fasting retreat with a true vegan doctor who is an expert in fasting. Um, calorie restriction, simple calorie restriction, not just carbs, but just reducing your calories can increase ketone bodies short term and help you burn fat. Now, when you look at plants, plants are, uh, especially vegetables, um, our vegetables are really high in nutrients, 
really low in calories. So you're getting all that nutrition, all the fiber, a lot of your omega-3s and good healthy fats in there, but you're getting low amount, lower amounts of calories. So for most people, simply by going to a whole food plant-based diet, they're achieving this. And this is part of the reason why the body fat can be coming off very quickly, but you're doing so in a healthy way that is improving the microbiome, improving cardiovascular health, improving the amount of antioxidants that are in the system, reducing inflammation where a keto diet can cause a significant amount of inflammation because of the dietary patterns of the uh, fats in the gut. And of course, exercise. When you exercise intensely, especially if you're exercising regularly, your body can produce ketones then too. Again, remember, low ketones can be a very good positive health promoting effect. And they happen naturally when you sleep, when you fast, when you use calorie restriction, when you exercise. You don't know, need to go on to an extreme diet and run the risk of very high levels of ketones, which can damage up the arteries, they can damage your heart tissue. And this tissue, once those fibrotic tissues are there, they could be permanent. Uh, our body replaces most of the cells in our body, depending on what uh, tissue you're looking at. Most of the cells are about approximately every seven years. Some tissues actually last for, for our entire lifespan, uh, like uh, bone takes a little longer and stuff like this, but on general, on average, about seven years. However, the heart tissue keeps those cells pretty much in place and about 40% of all your heart cells stay with you for your whole life. So once you damage them, once you apoptize them, once you destroy them, you're done. That's it. No replacements. So this is a really high risk to try to get yourself down into normal body fat when there are many other different ways to do this in a healthful way. And that's my big concern. And that's why I want to talk about this. Short term, probably not such a bad thing, but you could still get yourself into a high ketos, high ketone body uh, level that could cause damage to both the arteries and the heart tissue. Why do that? Why put yourself at risk at that when there's so many other approaches? Just by lowering your total caloric intake, increasing your cardio or, uh, or resistance training, um, or just improving and switching over to a whole food plant-based diet. So much better health for you. Fasting is great for your health and longevity. A pl whole food plant-based diet is known to increase longevity. Exercise is known to increase longevity. All these improve your health parameters, improve your life, yet the keto diet, even though it's reducing body fat and may improve some other uh, functionality temporarily, long-term, can be causing scarification of the heart, and you only get one of those, uh, unless you get open heart surgery and replace it with somebody else's. Um, but that's not a good backup plan, and it's nothing I would ever wish on anybody. So I hope you've got this information. Um, uh, Raymond asked, uh, is a keto diet and paleo diet similar? It depends on who you ask and how they frame the diet. Uh, but yes, they're, they're, they can be very similar. Keto diet is more specifically at uh, raising ketones by severely reducing the amount of carbohydrates, where it, as a paleo diet doesn't necessarily seek out to reduce carbohydrates. It's just looking at more of the, uh, them in their whole states, uh, their natural states, um, which would be technically um, mostly raw, if not entirely raw. And that's just not what most people are consuming right now. So um, people say they're on a paleo diet and eating all kinds of processed foods and calling that paleo. And okay, that's just <laughs> not what people ate. And they weren't barbecuing stuff and things like that back then either. So um, yeah, I think the approach to it, and again, yes, there may be some short-term benefits. The studies bear that out. Um, but long term, this is not a good approach. And if you raise it to too high levels of ketones, you could be causing damage. Some of that damage may be permanent to your heart and cardiovascular system. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like, share it. If you want to get this information out to other people, uh, again, I'm not anti- keto. I am not. Uh, I've used keto diets uh, for bodybuilding before. They are effective, but I am pro health. 
And when I look at what this specific uh, uh, diet does to people's health, I can't support um, people utilizing that when there are so many other pathways to getting yourself into a high, uh, a better body composition of the appropriate amount of fats to, um, to muscle and getting yourself into a healthy BMI. That's important because I want to see you live a long, healthy, prosperous life. That's why I share this information, not to be make people right or wrong about dietary choices. That's not, I don't care about that. That's ego. I'm here because I genuinely want to help people have and live the best life that they can. You know, I was thinking about earlier today, we our trend is we uh, go through life and we uh, hopefully make more and more money and, and are very prosperous and get to enjoy that money at the end of our life. But at the same time, we're not taking care of our body and our, our trajectory for our health goes down with age while our trajectory for earning income. So we're at the highest, best place to actually enjoy our income at the end of our lives but we don't have any health to enjoy it. I want that for you. Look, I'm 60 years of age. And now I am just really, the company is ramping up. I'm so excited and so happy, but I'm so excited that I'm 60 and I'm still out uh, on the beach and playing in the sand and, and doing all the fun stuff, working out, doing 450 pound, you know, decline bench press. I love it. It's fun. It's exciting. I have take no medications, no drugs. I have no disease states. My blood pressure is perfect. My heart rate's perfect. Everything is functioning as it well it should be. Brain health, heart health, muscle health. I mean, that's 60 years of age. I should be losing muscle by all the rest of the standards out there. And I'm not. It's because what we put in our mouth. It's so simple. And you have the power to make that choice. I am not about being right or wrong about certain things. I'm about sharing information with people so that you can make the best choice for your life. If this doesn't information doesn't resonate to you, you're not going to make any choice of difference. I know that. I accept that. That's the way life is. But if I can share something that does work for you, that does make sense for you and can improve the quality of your life, awesome. That's what I want for you. And so that's why I share this information. I hope more people can get out of the dogma of I'm right, this is wrong, this is my diet, this is your diet, you know. It's not about that to me. It's about health, it's about the science, it's about the nutrition and what it does on your life. When you have the science to back up and you understand the physiology and then you understand the nutrition and you can pull all those three together to improve the quality of your life, yeah, I'll, I want to live to 100 years, but I want to live quality 100 years, and I want that for you. So if that's something you want, then you'll give it a thumbs up. If it's not, I totally understand. Some people say, I hate this life. I'm just going to party until I'm dead, and when sooner it's over, it's better. I get that. I used to feel that way in my 20s, and thank God uh, I almost killed myself doing that, and thank God I didn't because I'm having such a great time now, and I hope you are too. Live long and prosper, my friends. We'll see you next week.